So welcome back. So in the previous lecture, what we have discussed is the Fischer-Tropsch reaction in detail. So we have seen the type of reactors operating: the circularized fluoride based reactor, then the slurry bed reactor, then the tubular reactors. So and also we have seen the operating conditions uh, and what type of feedstock they take up. So some of them take up natural gas, some coal, and there are several companies like Sasol, Shell, Exxon Mobil. So right now in this current lecture, what we will focus is we will focus on a certain plant. So plant means we are focusing on companies. The two companies which we will focus here is a Sasol and Shell. So both they use what they do is they take up this either uh, the syn gas as the precursor when the syn gas can be from natural gas or it can be coal, but primarily we will be using coal here and then it will form the various fuel components such as gasoline, diesel, wax, etc. So continuing where we left the fischer trust process, in this particular lecture we will cover the Sasol, this is one company uh, which is present worldwide and the SDMS process that is the shell middle distillate process. So that is what our content says, we will see the Sasol process, in this Sasol process what we have is, we have the Sasol process, uh, uh, we will take one then the 2 and 3, all 3 processes together. So we will see what are these 1, 2, 3. So like 1, uh, what they do is they prepare the output as primarily several components like starting from wax to the gasoline products to the liquid fuels. While in the 2 and 3, later on what they did is they developed and improved upon the process and the output was primarily transportation fuels such as petrol and gasoline. Then we will go to the shell middle distillate synthesis. So shell middle distillate synthesis process is a similar process like Sasol which will take up the syngas as the input and will produce the transportation fuels as the output. So first for the input of Sasol 1 for any process what I will do I will slowly take you the entire operation of the entire plant of Sasol 1 that is very important to visualize because in this particular uh, modules in this particular course we do not have this oil refinery. The oil refinery different uh, parts and how the crude distillation unit works is probably you must be knowing but since this is analogous to oil refinery so I thought of discussing more of the oil refinery different reactions such as you have this catalytic cracking, catalytic reforming, hydro treating then uh, hydro processing or hydro treating is a part of hydro processing okay, and isomerization, alkylation all this we will take up later by later. So now the feedstock for the Sasol 1 it is similar to like a normal plant it is a requires a high pure syngas. So for the syngas you require coal so it is a low temperature so this is called a low temperature FT reactor what it does is it will gasify the coal with steam and oxygen in 13 Lurgi gasifiers. So before we go into the coal, so what we will do is we will see what sort of reactions occurs in the coal medium. So there will be two types of re reaction which is occurring. One is your heterogeneous heterogeneous reaction. When you talk about coal gasification, you have the coke reacting with which was I have read here as steam and oxygen. So its steam means I am inserting here as water, in this what it will do, it will convert to syngas. So this is a reversible reaction. Then you may also have this reaction which you already uh, we have discussed these reactions still I am just repeating so that 2 CO. So each of these are heterogeneous reactions because coke is in the solid form. So you can form monoxide here or the carbon can itself combine with oxygen directly. It will form again carbon monoxide okay. or it may also have a reaction let us say simple like carbon plus oxygen to form carbon dioxide or it can also combine with the hydrogen to form methane. All these reactions are happening when we talk about coal gasification. So you have either the presence of steam which is H2O or the presence of oxygen. So all these reactions if you see it is primarily one phase is solid, other phase is liquid or gas. You are producing syngas here CO plus H2 while uh, here you are producing methane here. So this methane can again be converted back to syngas 
it can be converted back to syngas if you again react it with steam. So, in a way you are producing syngas in the hydrogenous manner. So, many of this process out of the all the process the first two are endothermic in nature. So, it is you require heat. So, I am writing here positive I am not writing the absolute value while the remaining three are all exothermic process ok. So, when you would want to do you want to produce the syngas components like carbon monoxide, hydrogen it is all endothermic. So, you require heat you to supply heat from outside and these are all reversible. The what are the homogeneous reactions in the gas gasifier? In the homogeneous reactions what you have is let us say you have 2 moles of carbon monoxide reacting with oxygen to form 2 moles of carbon dioxide. This is one of the homogeneous reactions all the phases are gaseous in nature or carbon monoxide is again reacting with water that is steam here when I talk about water it means steam to form CO2 plus H2 ok. Now, again these two reactions are exothermic in nature it is a negative heat of reaction. So, it means that some of these heterogeneous and homogeneous reactions takes place in this gasifier and these gasifiers several companies do manufacture this one of them is Lurgi. So, what does Lurgi gasifier do? I will show you the schematic of the Lurgi gasifier and where this suppose there are the combustion reaction happening carbon plus water carbon plus oxygen. So, wherever this combustion reaction occurring heat evolved is huge. So, your temperature is more ok. So, your internals of this gasifier, gasifier is nothing but a reactor, but you have the coal in it and you send uh, in one. So, in this particular Lurgi gasifier what you do it is a counter current way it is operated. You send the coal from the top and the gas which is the either steam or oxygen from the bottom. So, at the bottom end you collect ash before it slags and in the upper end you collect syngas. So, let us see the just a small a schematic of how it works. So, what you do is you have this hopper. So, where uh, you have this lump coal. So, where here coal is fed ok. Coal is fed and then it is a jacketed steam the entire thing is jacketed in nature you have this stream and you end up here then what you do you, you have a. So, you send coal from the top. So, here you have the coal hopper if I want to write here down. Coal hopper. So, you insert the coal as a lump coal here. So, coal particles would be here. So, what they do is they will send it through a jacket inside the gasifier. So, this design is proprietary it is through Lurgi. So, what it does is it will end up the coal should be ending up here it will fall or fall down here. So, the entire portion th therefore, you have surrounded by a rotating grate ok. This is a rotating grate here surrounded. So, it will just take out allow the ash to pass through and uh, what you will do here in this end you will put on the in this end you will insert the your the feed that is the feed component that is either it will be oxygen plus H2O or steam. So, all the coal particles are here it will be accumulated here. So, what you do coal while it travels from the top. So, this is one jacketed stream a jacket stream is also here present. So, coal and the this so here you have the ash coming out ok. So, this is the ash coming out here. So, you insert coal from the top and uh, in this part you will get the syngas as output. Okay. So, uh, it works in such a manner. So, you have this raw hot syngas coming out from the top and uh, coal while it comes down initially there will be three things which is happening. First process will take is drying. So, 
So, it is the partial pyrolysis of the coal at this part, the partial pyrolysis of the coal takes place at this part upper end. As it comes down, what it happens is it interacts with the steam as well as water and then what happens is you have the gasification occurring in this region. So, this is a region for gasification. Okay. Once the gasification process starts, then the temperature also increases and it if increases very much in the while you go after classification you reach the combustion zone, this is the combustion zone. So, if when I talk about these three process drying, gasification, combustion, these takes place sequentially. The initially when the coal comes from, from the top drying or the partial pyrolysis of the coal takes place, then it is gasified and at this end, so it is the temperature is the highest and the combustion end. So, what you do it the temperature if it is highest what it will do it will heat the inlet oxygen or the steam. So, there here you have the ash collected and is taken out. So, precaution has to be take that the temperature of the combustion zone should be less than 1300 Kelvin. So, to avoid the slagging temperature. So, if it slags then you are not able to produce the actual uh, syn gas then will be a problem in the recovery. So, this is the way how the Lurgi gasifier this is a proprietary product developed by Lurgi company. So, it actually operates. So, now what this Fischer Troughs reactor do is they take coal as the input they convert it into syn gas and there are 13 such gasifiers working together. So, there are 13 one three in number. So, which is working in the gasifier. So, then let us see then if this is your input then how it proceeds we will see now. So, what we do is in the first part what you do is you require the air. So, now I have explained you the mechanism for the generation of the syn gas. So, what you do is now the where is the Lurgi taking place and where the air is coming from air and the steam. So, because this particular gasifier just now I explained requires both air as well as steam. So, the air comes up here in this part. So, you have a oxygen plant here let us say this is an oxygen plant. You have it sucks in air. Okay. So, then uh, you obviously you want to separate nitrogen and oxygen. So, you want to use cryogenic condition. So, you apply cryogenic temperature and you would separate out the nitrogen and oxygen. So, nitrogen is separated out here and the oxygen goes here O2. Now, you may ask what do we use the nitrogen? Now, if you remember you can combine nitrogen and hydrogen into ammonia. So, you have production of hydrogen also in the later stages. So, what you do they can combine together and produce ammonia. So, nothing is wasted out of all this. So, you have the sustainable plant designed in such a manner you requires the output even if it is off gases for some other purpose. It is not to be thrown away or it is not to be uh, like we have discussed in previous examples in sulfuric acid plant you actually have to throw out the SOX and NOX gases it has to be treated. So, nothing of that so it has to be consumed within the plant. So, once you have a cryogenic facility and you separate nitrogen and oxygen then all this whatever I have just now discussed that is a Lurgi gasifier is operated on Lurgi So, there are 13 such gasifiers. Okay. So, you have the coal as the starting material here. Okay. So, once you add coal, so you do the gasification. Now, where does the H2O comes from? The water will come from a power plant. So, what you do is here you have another subsystem that is the power point, power plant. So, what it will do is it will take coal and water, it will take again coal So, it will produce electricity some part it will be producing electricity while the remaining whatever you require it will generate steam high pressure steam. So, these both high pressure steam and the cryogenic oxygen which produced from the respective units are sent to the Lurie gasifier and what you have you have the syn gas produced. Now, this syn gas if it is produced it will also have some liquid component in it 
okay so you have not pure syngas because we need to have pure syngas because in the previous steps you have catalyst which may be poisoned by the presence of sulfur or coke particles so you need to remove all this so what you do is first they, you separate out you you have a separation unit here so separation unit what it will do is it will take up the products separation means you separate out the aqueous part and the liquid part the solid part or you can solid or liquid part both together so when the you take the aqueous part out you will have to you will get the phenols here then what you do you take up the liquid part or the solid part which is primarily heavy in the um, longer chain uh, you have this so there will be actually i mean you have the lauric acidifier you will have the syn gas so when it is condensed or it is separated you will have a liquid phase and then have a gas phase gas phase is syn gas so we let them go out in the previous in the downstream processes stage the liquid phase may be of different liquids you may have a aqueous phase and you have a non aqueous phase or a solid phase this solid phase is sent to a tar and oil workup so you have a tar also getting formed tar processing unit if i want tar processing unit pu tar processing unit what it will do it will form the all this necessary raw materials for the construction materials for as such as road prime then you have the creosote then you can have because it follows a particular refining process and the pitch so all these are the product of the star and you will again have a liquid uh, fraction from this star processing unit that is nothing but your naphtha naphtha so fine we have separated out the liquid part we have separated out the solid and liquid part and then we allow the gas to go move ahead so when you allow the gas to move ahead what it will do it will go to a purification step because i told you once you you have to do the purification step because any presence of any carbon or sulfur compounds will be detrimental the purification step what it will do it will try to extract both co2 and h2s carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide after this purification is done you may also have produce more of naphtha here so is this naphtha what you do again it's you apply a process which is called as hydrogenation you add the hydrogen atoms to it so that the compounds the produced are like similar to gasoline or diesel so what you do is what you do instead of gasoline and products you will form these compounds or maybe i just put it, put down here so easy to understand you have the produced gas like light light naphtha then heavy naphtha and you also get this btx what is this btx benzene toluene xylene so uh, when you do a purification then you again separate out some part of naphtha so whatever you get is pure syngas at the end pure syngas or synthetic gas whichever way you want to call it now these are two things these are the very important things you should remember in oil refinery you must recall so naphtha when it comes here you add hydrogen to it what you are doing is basically you are treating it to long chain carbons because all the hetero atom has been removed so in a naphtha you don't have any hetero atom so whatever hydro treating hydro treating means removal of hetero atom is done prior to naphtha so then from naphtha you produce useful chemicals such as gasoline diesel or maybe some useful chemicals such as btx benzene toluene xylene it may also be a product of hydrogenation now there are two difference between light naphtha and heavy naphtha now in the case of light naphtha what we refer is usually c5 to c6 compounds now c5 to c6 may it may be aromatic it may be cyclic it may be straight chain okay 
So now you know like in the cetane and octane number what are these referred to. So say like you have a more of hexadecane, suppose you have more of hexadecane, sorry hexadecane will come into the kerosene part. You more have this branched alkane such as 2, 2, 4 trimethyl pentane or you have benzene uh, all these things C6 benzene or hexane all this will be have higher octane number. So, what you do is from here you actually distill and produce more of those compounds. So, that is the starting point that is light naphtha. So, their boiling point will be between 30 to 90 degrees Celsius not more than that ok. Then heavy naphtha C7 to C7 to C11 I will say or it can be more than C11 also ok, C11 plus. So, it usually it is between 90 to 150 degrees Celsius the boiling points ok, so the boiling point. So, they are distilled easily. Now, if you know for light naphtha and for heavy naphtha uh, which will be very useful for the manufacture of components such as kerosene. Kerosene you know is straight chain compounds so like hexadecane has a octane rate hexadecane example this is a compound it has a C10 number of 100 C10 number so you will have more of that type of compounds the heavy naphtha and light naphtha you have this compound such as in the example you have benzene then you have hexane or cyclohexane. So, this will be useful when you are talking about the petrol component. So, in this case let us say if you have benzene it is more than 100, so greater than 100 octane number. If you have though you have to call this as octane number, octane greater than 100 for cyclohexane greater than 77. So, hexane is less than this in between 100 to 977. So, these are that is why it is very important. So, in the entire uh, syngas production you not only produce the actual syngas you also produce the other components which are useful in some other applications such as light and heavy naphtha. So, moving ahead uh, so let us but before we move ahead let us summarize what we have studied in this. So, what we do in the first process is we the cryogenic air separation generates an residue oxygen the ROM synthesis gas is cooled, water and tars are extracted. So, water part and the tars part are extracted. So, from the liquid phase phenol is extracted and then tar is refined to create a variety of other components such as road prime, creosite and pitch. Syngas is then purified to eliminate hydrogen sulphide, carbon dioxide and naphtha boiling range hydrocarbon. So, on one side you have this naphtha component, on the other side you have the gases that is hydrogen sulphide and carbon dioxide. These substances together with naphtha from tar processing, so when they are hydro treated means when they are present, so I have written a step called hydrogenation, it means hydro treated means they are added with hydrogen. The resulting chemicals can be blended, so whatever the chemicals is coming out light and heavy naphtha they can be blended with the gasoline or pool or it can be also marked as aromatic solvent. So, if you are producing more of benzene, toluene, xylene these are very useful precursor for several chemicals. In short they are called as BTX. So, this is what we have done till now from the syngas, from coal we have produced syngas, purified it and then we have produced ultra pure syngas which is ready to be inserted into the reactor section. So, reactor what I will consider is both the fluidized bed and the fixed bed. So, if you know that in the fluidized bed the products will be primarily alkanes towards the gasoline type of products that is transportation fuels while in the fixed bed you will have more of waxy components that is wax like components the longer hydrocarbon chain length. So, let us move ahead now let us see the reactor section. So, what is the reactor section? So, in the reactor section what you have is you have the syngas coming from the purified what you have you will have two sections. So, pure syngas you actually send this make in two parts. So, in one part what you do is send it to a fixed bed reactor ok. Fixed bed reactor 
or sometime it is called as FT fixed bed Fischer Chops reactor. So, it is FT reactor if I write here FT fixed bed FT reactor ok and the other part because you need to have products from both the long chain as well as the transportation fuels and the second part what you do is, is send it to another reactor which is called the circulating fluid bed reactor. So, if I write here in this short circulating fluidized bed Fischer Tropsch reaction. So, circulating fluidized bed Fischer Tropsch reactor. So, this is the way it has been sent in two ways. So, what you do is then you have the products. So, you have uh, this syngas reacting and then producing number of products. So, when the products comes out you have to separate it. So, when you do a separation here again you have a separation stage here. you have a separation step carried out here, then you have the off gases also coming out because you may have some which is not related to your main product the off gases. So, that is one of the off gases if you take out the off gases what you have is since you know there will be two types of products one is the wax products wax type components another you have the oil type components oil type components ok. So, more will be towards wax type components and in the wax type component what you do you further I will write here hydrogenation hydrogenation do a hydrogenation and produces now heavy waxes and light waxes. So, you have the heavy wax heavy wax and the light waxes ok. So, what you do basically here in this hydrogenation step is you break the components you break the components by some reaction then you produce both heavy and light waxes. So, what do you do with the oil part? So, oil part you send to a normal refining process sent to a normal refining process. So, what you do what you get is finally, gasoline and diesel gasoline and diesel ok fine. So, now what you do is this is about the fixed bed reactor because in fixed bed reactor temperature is less temperature less formation of waxy product will be more. So, this wax production is more as compared to the oil production. There may be some part of what you can the C 3 C 4, but we will see worry about that later some part of C 3 C 4 with the olefins. So, let us see what happens with the CFTB again same thing you have the separation section here. The separation section what it will do again it will take out the off gases here separate out the off gases. So, in this off gases what they do is some part they take out and sell it as ammonia or town gas while the remaining is again sent to a autothermal reactor. So, autothermal reformer or reformer reactor. So, it is similar like the gasifier ok you add the steam and oxygen to it. So, it is autothermal reformer. So, in its autothermal reform is something like that. So, whatever the exothermic reactions heat is generated is taken up by the endothermic reaction. So, you have the both combustion as well as the reactions concerning with steam happening. So, once you do that again you what you do you produce the syngas and send it back to the CFB. Now, what to do with the remaining part what you do is separation you do a separation then again you have the oil part as before. So, this is the oil part here as before, but there it will be more of this oil. So, like a conventional refinery is set here you have a column the refinery is here. So, what you have is in the refinery you will have the gasoline. petrol then you have diesel 
then you can also have fuel oil but this petrol and gasoline may be uh, similarly it is similar in nature so the nomenclature is different but primarily you will get gasoline and diesel so once you do that what you do is you will also produce some amount of this c3 c4 part this is then combined so this c3 c4 gets combined here and what you do is it is sent to a oligomerization unit so oligomerization unit it will be sent this c3c4 whatever the compound coming and what it what the end product will be either lpg so there be monomers of the alkenes will join together or again it will produce more of gasoline okay so now there are other products also the aqueous phase products so what you do with the aqueous phase product from the both side you join them together because they will be almost of similar kind the aqueous phase so i write here aqueous phase to imply that aqueous phase what you do the convert it, this is a oxygenate recovery so oxygenate work up so with this process you do oxygenate work up you can also produce alcohol and ketones so now see the entire process so you are producing heavy wax light wax gasoline diesel alcohols ketones lpg gasoline again petrol so it means like these are the like look like a conventional refinery like oil refinery in the previous slide there is an additional you know the higher boiling point that is the pitch the tar which we call asphaltene all this also coming out so it's like all the cuts of the petroleum so it is very analogous to oil refinery so the reactions occurring are also similar to a oil refinery so that is you should understand huh? this is the product which we have two sections one is the puri purification section syngas and another is the you have the actual reactor section so this is a reactor section so what the off gases from separation what they do is they again will be sending some part to as ammonia and the remaining gases there will be syn gas mostly present here so they will fixed and send it back to the reactor fixed bed reactor okay so this is the way the entire uh, this sasol 1 process works upon this is the entire if you want to say i can i have described a refinery in short so let us then summarize what we have learned so what we have learned is in the reactor sections the purified syn gas is introduced the reactor effluent is cooled and water and oil are condensed so the water and oil are condensed here the oxygen recovery what you do is you convert them into alcohols and ketone the distillation of the low temperature so low temperature means the fixed bed temperature that the fixed bed reactor i'm talking about the hydrocarbon output will give gasoline diesel and waxes but it will be more of the waxes so there are then distilled a heavy and a <coughs> lighter heavy and light wax these are then or they can also be called as medium wax and hard wax medium wax melting point and hard wax melting point is given again hydrogenated to eliminate any leftover oxygenated compounds and alkenes the oil fraction from the high temperature fischer tropsch reacted is then processed over an acidic catalyst to convert oxygenates to alkenes so the oxygen is can further be converted to alkenes to olefins it is then isomerized to increase the gasoline octane number so we will see this process the c3 and c4 products are then oligomerized in order to create gasoline components so oligomerization isomerization all these are uh, post processing steps in a refinery i will take that up in detail the off gases just now i mentioned consists of methane ethane ethene and unconverted syn gas it is used in variety of ways a portion is handled in a cryogenic separation unit in order to extract hydrogen which is then combined with nitrogen to form ammonia so that's what i'm saying so you have hydrogen is forming in one of the such process you can add and react with the nitrogen producing the cryogenic so the nitrogen and hydrogen combined to form ammonia the methane rich byproduct of cryogenic separation is then utilized as town gas the remainder is used in the fixed bed reactor so again i have just now i told it is again recycled back to the reactors the fixed bed and the circulating fluidized bed reactor
So, that is what I have written is circularizing the residual of gases is catalytically reformed with steam and oxygen because the steam and oxygen we are using. So, as the heat of reaction of the combustion is taken up by the endothermic reaction to generate recycled syngas for the CFD reactor. So, this consists completes the Sassol one. So, before I go to this uh, shell metal distillate synthesis process, I need to discuss few concepts regarding to oil refinery. Then prior to that, there was some advancement in the Sassol 2 and 3 process. We will discuss that first. The primary objective of Sassol 2 and 3 plants is the manufacture of gasoline. In the earlier part, what we have seen, the aim was to produce waxes. Now, the process is to manufacture gasoline. The fluidized fed bed reactors here replace the circularized fed bed reactors. So, they use a number of processes such as catalytic reforming, alkylation, hydrotreating, oligomerization. Okay. So, the isomerization maximizes the transportation fuel generation while hydrodeboxing is the process of removing long chain hydrocarbons through cracking and isomerization in the presence of hydrogen. All this process whether you talk about alkylation, hydrotreating, oligomerization or isomerization, this will enhance the why we are doing it is to enhance the diesel fuel characteristics. So, let us see what are those processes which are enhancing the diesel fuel characteristics. So, first is your catalytic cracking. So, in the catalytic cracking, what you have is you have long chain compounds. So, for example, uh, you have the compounds such as uh, long chain compounds, you have the long chain compounds. What you do? You break the C C bonds, a C C bond breaking occurs, you break it, you break the C C bonds. So, if when you break the C C bonds, so if you are converting heavy oil, so long chain means I can write down here as heavy oil components, you break through the help of catalyst. So, the catalyst is usually uh, the acid based catalyst, the C C bond cleavage is occurring and with this C C bond cleavage, what you get is lower chain compounds or you can say a compounds molecular weights which in having a mixture of the branch chains, mixture of branched alkanes I can see, alkanes. So, primarily it is the breaking of the C C bond. Okay. So, for example, if I want to draw, uh, let us say this is your, what is this y axis? Let us say this is number of moles cracked. If the number of moles, let us 100 moles of the heavy oil is cracked and uh, then uh, in this part, what I will do? I will write the carbon number. So, I can number them 0, then you can remember this 1, 2, 3 like that, then uh, 4 like that keep on doing it. Let us say it is 15 or 16. So, what it will do when you do a catalytic process, let us say it have 20 moles, then 40 moles per 60 moles. Hundred moles. So, what is this unit? So, this unit, if I want to write down, I can define it in this manner. That is moles moles formed per per hundred mole cracking of of hexadecan. Okay. So, hexadecan is a uh, synonymous with the long chain compound heavy oil. So, if I use 100 moles as an input to the reactor, what is the moles produced in such a case other products. So, 100 moles will getting converted in various. So, if you do this, you will see this product will be distribution will be something like this. So, you produce more of this this region. So, 3, 4, 5, 6 region. Okay. This region will be more. So, there will be two ways of doing it. Either it can be a catalytic cracking or this catalytic cracking or thermal cracking. So, thermal cracking will give a very narrow range of molecular weights. So, if you see if I use 100 moles as a starting point of hexadecan for cracking, you get products with molecular weights ranging from 2 to 6. 
and then some uh, so the heavier part is lesser and lesser. So, this is what we called as catalytic cracking. So, like that this is one such process another process is catalytic reforming. So, what is this catalytic reforming? So, reforming means what you do is in reforming the molecular structure remains the same, atoms remains the same it is a rearrangement of the atoms. So, if I write down it is the rearrangement, rearrangement. rearrangement of the molecules or atoms whatever. So, again why we are making this rearrangement is we want to try to make it more branched or we want to produce benzene because benzene and branched alkanes have higher octane number which is useful in petrol. So, what we do is in this product let us say we see a one of the reaction what is isomerization. it can be isomerization this is a type of reaction let us say for isomerization means you have this one. So, straight chain compound 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, heptane getting converted to. So, this type of this thing huh? some this type of reaction where you have the branched formation. So, there is no change in the molecular weight or you may have the cyclization reaction because this is also a good route to produce uh, benzene cyclization may be something like this. So, reversible reaction you may form cyclohexane plus hydrogen. So, here you see you the source of hydrogen. So, since cyclohexane will have a higher octane number as compared to linear chain. Then you have the aromatization reaction. What do you do? You produce from this product whatever we have formed, you produced you can benzene. So, aromatization, cyclization, isomerization are simply a rearrangement of molecules. This is called catalytic reforming. Okay. So, moving ahead. Then we go to alkylation next step. So, in alkylation what you do you add up the two compounds to form an alkyl group. So, for example, I will just show you one example. So, let us say it is the reaction of isobutene primarily it is related to olefin isobutene with alkenes. reaction of isobutene with alkenes to be specific there may be other reaction, but we will to form higher branched alkanes higher branched alkanes. Okay. So, what is the reaction? Let us say I have this reaction I am not making it the entire reaction. So, you have this isobutene reacting with let us say one of the alkenes. Huh. What you do is when you react it you may have different products getting formed. So, you have you may have this product or you may have this product or you may be having this product you may be here. or you may simply have this product or maybe another one see here you can also get this. So, one such reaction which actually takes up all these are branched alkenes. So, these branched alkenes will have higher octane number. So, these are one of the another key octane number. Huh? Please remember all these reactions are to increase the octane number. So, this type of reaction it has been said that around 38 percent this is forming then 16 percent you have this to be product to be formed then you are forming less of this and uh, something more of 25 percent. So, you have this variety of this branched alkanes getting formed and this is the step where you form a alkylation process in a refinery. 
Then comes the hydro treating. So, what is this hydro treating? So, the term hydro treating means the term hydro treating refers to the removal of the heteroatom that is sulfur, nitrogen, etc. So, there is no bond breaking as such, but only what the bond breaks takes place, but it is the carbon nitrogen or carbon sulfur. Okay. So, either it is the carbon nitrogen or carbon sulfur, these bonds are been broken. Okay. So, for example, if I want to say that what are the starting products, let us say you have this thiophene. So, for example, if you have the thiophene here, so you have a 5 membered ring structure. So, what you do? You have to add hydrogen and break the sulfur hydrogen bond. Okay. So, if you do that, you will form this compound and H2S. Or if you have the benzothiophene, benzothiophene. So, benzothiophene is something like you have the reaction going on where you have three fused rings with sulfur in between. So, you do a you add the hydrogen hydrogenation reaction and you form a compound which may be uh, without the sulfur atom. So, some sort of compound it is this. Okay. Or maybe pyridine, nitrogen, we have seen sulfur, now let us see pyridine. So, pyridine it may be having like this 5 membered ring structure. Five times hydrogen, it may form stretch chain compound with ammonia. Or you may also have phenol also. In the phenol, what you have is you have this compound phenol when it is added with hydrogen, you get benzene directly. So, all these are examples of hydro treating assignments or hydro treating reactions. So, whenever you produce diesel or petrol fuel, if you do the this reactions, you want to separate out the aromatic part, you should be absolutely sure you remove all the heteroatoms before you go to the uh, production of this isomerization or alkylation, all this it should be free from all this heteroatom. So, what they do in the refinery, they will use to convert it to straight chain or those compounds which does not have any hydroatom. So, essentially related to either C bond or C nitrogen, sulfur or oxygen. Okay. Then the another part which is important in the case of uh, what you called uh, this waxes, waxes production is called hydrocracking. So, hydrocracking means here what you do is you break the C-C bond. Okay. So, what you do is uh, to lighter products. For example, in this what you do this reaction, let us say you have this dibenzothiophene, diaromatic compound which is this. We have a diaromatic compound here. So, this is it. So, you convert all the hydro cracking means you change it to you remove the unsaturated part. Okay. So, unsaturated part you remove by adding hydrogen or sometimes you can also break this. Let us say you can break this entire chain. For example, the same compound if I keep on adding hydrogen, 3 moles of hydrogen further. So, this will form in a mixture of plus let us say this compound okay. or it may also what is very important in the in the case of waxes, what is in the, in the case of waxes that is hydro dewaxing, this reaction takes place, it is all under hydro cracking. Let us say this is a very large compound, it is added with hydrogen to form two short compounds. So, plus 
So all this reaction in this hydro cracking, what you do is the starting point is heavy oil. You break them and break it into small parts. So this is the first example is the aromatic hydrogenation, then it is called a hydro desiclization. Aromatic hydrocarbonation is given here, it is getting saturation to unsaturated and then unsaturated it is broken into linear cut. So this is called hydro cracking. All these are happening in this different Sassol processes. So let us see the Sassol uh, 2 and 3 process what we have is here. So again what you do is you have the syn gas coming here. You have the syn gas coming here. Then you have the fluidized bed reactor FFB fixed bed reactor, fixed bed fluidized Fischer Tropsch reactor fixed bed. Then uh, you do a separation. You have a aqueous phase here aqueous phase. So aqueous phase you can easily work up through a what we have already discussed oxygenate work up, oxygenate work up you produce alcohols and ketones here. Then uh, what you do is the aqueous phase is separated and the remaining hydrocarbon phase you divide it. Let us say in the first part you get chain length greater than C12 plus. So you will do hydro dewaxing. Hydro hydro dewaxing to get diesel. Okay. So hydro dewaxing just now I mentioned in the previous slide you breaking them into small compound. Then uh, it is like a simple like a refinery only okay. then you will have the C7 to C11, C7 to C11 cut. In this cut what you will do you will do a catalytic reforming, you will do a catalytic reforming to form gasoline. Again this I have discussed what are the reactions involved I need not repeat here okay. Then the remaining part is coming out to be C5, C6. So this will go in the terms of C5, C6 will go isomerization. produce again gasoline same component because these molecular weights are not different in isomerization they are same the rearrangement is done catalytic reforming also rearrangement is done and breaking is also done breaking is done so both are producing gasoline and the remaining you will have the C1 to C4 product C1 to C4 what they will do is in the C4 you will remove CO2 you will use CO2 removal, you do a CO2 removal and then do a cryogenic separation, cryogenic, I write here cryogenic separation, cryogenic, you apply cryogenic, what you do is separate out the C1 part from here. If you do a C1 part, so it means methane is getting recycled and you do a methane recycler, again you send a autothermal reformer, okay, here you send a autothermal reformer. In this autothermal reformer you again produce again syngas and send it to the here the product, product is syngas. So C1 you separated after you uh, done with the, the, what about the remaining C2, C3, C4? So the C2 is separated because some of them C2 you can easily separate through cryogenic process as ethene, ethene is a precursor for petrochemical industry. 
So ethene is coming out here and what you do with C3C4, you do some C3C4, you send it to oligomerization unit. and you produce LPG and gasoline, okay. This is how the Sassol 1 and 2 works, fine. So what it is, so this is all about the Sassol process. Now the finally I will coming to just few things to discuss as the shell middle distillate synthesis SMDS process. We have finished threshold, we have also seen how the process works, it is analogous to a refinery. Uh, so we are producing the various cuts which is required and uh, we will uh, now go to this process which is called the shell middle distillate synthesis process. The shell is the first company to construct a fissure chops facility for the production of intermediate distillates from distant natural gas. Shell's middle distillate synthesis plant, it has a plant in Malaysia which has utilized natural gas from offshore fields. Natural gas is typically oxidized, here again you oxidize natural gas with oxygen to form syngas. The H2 to CO ratio is around 1.7 which is lower than 2.15 necessary for the cobalt based catalyst. So iron based catalyst can hold up this uh, lower, lower carbon monoxide but for this cobalt base you need a higher hydrogen. So what you do, you add hydrogen gas by a catalytic steam reforming. Okay, so just to increase the ratio. So what is just, I will draw this, uh, this shell metal distillate process. It is a very simple uh, process. So in this process, you have the heart is the reactor. You have the reactor here. So you have the tubular reactor basically, where catalyst is coated here inside. Okay. So you have this reactor here, then uh, you have the syngas coming at the top. Syngas coming at the top, you have the boiler feed water, I mean in short I will write BFW. So it will be using to cool the whatever the f liquids effluents is uh, products are forming inside the tube. So it steam is generated. Okay. Now what it will do is you send it to a flash unit, okay. you send it to a flash unit where you separate the liquid and the gaseous part. The gaseous part it will be primarily it will separate out the gaseous part. In the liquid part what you will do is you will send this liquid at the top of the hydrocracker unit. So this hydrocracker unit if I want to draw it like this. It will have different catalyst at different locations. Okay, and uh, you add uh, hydrogen to it in the different respective portions. You add hydrogen to it because you need to do a hydro cracking reaction. So I'll write here. This is hydro cracking. This is the hydro cracking section, this is your flash section, you separate out the gas and the liquid part and this is your fixed bed reactor, okay, fixed bed uh, fissure chops or fissure chops reactor, this is a multi tubular reactor, fissure chops, okay. So when you add this hydrogen, where this hydrogen comes from, I will tell you. So the products of this hydro cracker, you have made small compounds out of it. So the units, the I should also write what is the temperature for the entry of the stain gas is around 470 Kelvin, near about and around 30 bars and the temperature here is around 570 Kelvin and it is around 40 bars. So whatever the products which are coming out, it is then sent to a distillation column, okay. So in this distillation column, you have the products coming out which is naphtha, then you will have kerosene based on their boiling point, they are separated and you have the diesel, okay. 
So, whatever the remaining uh, you separate out the hydrogen also because it goes with it. So, what you do is you take out the hydrogen from here and it is used as a source for the hydrocracking reaction. Then the remaining gases is primarily LPG, it gets connected with the off gases coming out and this is taken out as fuel gas. So, this is the entire shell metal distillate process. So, you have a reactor, a flash unit, a hydrocracker and a distillation column. column. So, we go ahead. So, utilized the reactors to be dotted, they are multitubular, these are fixed bed reactors with over 10,000 tubes holding a cobalt catalyst. Okay. The synthesis, the production of waxy alkanes is preferred because it is a multitubular reactor, temperature is low. So, production of long chain carbon atoms are obvious. In the last stage of the process, distillation is used to separate the products primarily diesel, kerosene and naphtha. So, depending on market demand, the product distribution can be moved towards the maximum kerosene mode or a maximum diesel mode by adjusting the operating condition during hydrocracking. So, when you operate the hydrocracker, the way you operate, it will decide what is the output, what is the product. So, the product may be either maximum kerosene or it can be maximum diesel. Okay. So, this is where we actually get the desired product. So, this is already there uh, lots of plants which are going with the SDMS uh, licensing uh, which is producing this transportation fuels. Thank you. So, you can go through this website for the Fisher Trap synthesis, then this website for the Sasol process and also go to the Shell SDMS process which discusses the entire uh, this diagram and that is also it is a nice video where you can visualize how this SDMS process takes place. Thank you.